Bob Schieffer brings up to date on those tight Senate races. Well, uh, Michigan, Montana, Washington State, Missouri, they're all still very close. Uh, in Michigan, uh, the big issue seems to be uh, prescription drugs. That also seems to be the issue in Montana. Uh, Missouri, this is that weird race where we had Mel Carnahan, who was a Democratic candidate, killed in a plane crash. The governor says that if Carnahan wins that he will appoint his widow to that seat but all of these races dan are still too close to call if the democrats win three of them as i've said before and hold the seat in nebraska we'll have a 50 50 tie in the senate bob that uh, new jersey senate race won by john uh, corzine uh, for the democrats a hold on there this guy spent 80 million dollars in this race. He must have more money than Carter has little liver pills to spend that kind of money on a Senate race. Well, he has a whole lot. Uh, this is more money than Ross Perot spent on his presidential campaign. And we thought when Ross Perot spent $63 million, that was a lot of money to be spending. Uh, but this fellow has gone out and uh, basically, uh, I don't know another way to put it, he has basically bought himself a Senate race. So I guess if you congratulate him in the same way you would congratulate someone for being able to afford a big car. He wanted to send it race and he bought one. Well, in fairness, let's say that you have to want it badly. You have to care enough about the country, care enough about public service in the country to put $80 million on the line. But let's move along this presidential race. Woo! 230 to 225. Gore leads Bush. But in some key ways, the race, you can read it still shaded possibly toward Bush. Ed Brady, tell us about those close, uncalled presidential races and why Bush still has a strong chance to win. You know, it's going to come down, Dan, to some of these states with six, seven, eleven electoral votes that are going to decide who the next president of the United States is. You figure in a, in a, at a time of prosperity like this that people vote their pocketbooks. But you take a look at Oregon, which has seven electoral votes, still too close to call. Gore is not getting credit for the economy. Eighty-two percent of the people who voted today say that the national economy is good. But how did they vote? They divided just about evenly, about 47% for Gore, 45% for Bush. You go to Arkansas with six electoral votes. Bush is winning the younger voters there, those ages 18 to 29 and, and 30 to 44. He's also winning 50% of these young voters, and 61% of the voters in Arkansas had unfavorable things to say about how they felt about him. Nevada drops for Bush, excuse me, Ed. Uh, four electoral votes, this was expected, but nonetheless, uh, sighs of relief and hoops of joy in the Bush camp, because now the electoral uh, college count goes this way. 230 for Gore, 225 for Bush. Folks, this doesn't happen this late in a presidential campaign, not very often. Uh, 230 to 229, doesn't get any closer than that. Bush moved up to 229 uh, when he got Nevada's four electoral votes. 270 needed to win. This is the way the Electoral College map looks at this hour. Color Nevada red. It begins blinking, as is the case with every other blinking state in red. Nevada's a state that Clinton Gore carried the last time. Not so this time, and it could be, could be decisive for George Bush. States to what? Washington with 11. Polls are closed. Don't know how it's going to go. Oregon with seven. Again, don't know how it's going to go. Arizona with eight, you'd expect it to go for Bush, but who can say? Wisconsin with 11's been out there for a long time. Iowa with seven, Arkansas with six, and Florida's big 25 remains undecided. The Electoral College vote with 270 needed to win, 230 for Bush, uh, uh, 230 for Gore, 229 for Bush. It's seesawed back and forth, so we're bound to make those kinds of things. It may come down to Florida. We started the night saying, it may be Florida that decides it. Florida's moved back into the undecided column. May yet be Florida that decides it. Our CBS News election night coverage will continue. Just keep the dial right where it is. It's election night on CBS. With 270 Electoral College votes needed to win, Gore has 230, Bush 229. That's the CBS News election night headline at this hour. The presidential race hanging in the balance, cliffhanger. Bush has the stronger hand the rest of the way in, but 
Gore is looking for an inside straight draw to win. Gore has to have Florida 25 electoral votes there, but even that's not enough without one of these. Clinton home state of Arkansas or Oregon or Iowa where campaign 2000 began. It's still possible for either one of these candidates to win in, in Las Vegas, where it's against the law to bet on presidential races, or somewhere in London where they book these things, they'd have it a slight odds on for Bush to win only because of the state's outstanding. The general perception is Bush may have the best chance to win them. But you know what? Uh, there have been prediction contradictions all night long. Why would we think it changes now? At 11.30 in the East, this is the all-important electoral vote count at this moment. It takes 270 to win, 230 for Gore, 229 for Bush. This is the up-to-the-minute popular vote. We're putting up our, our campaign map, but let me talk about the map for a minute, and then we'll show you the popular vote. The popular vote shows a one percentage uh, margin for Bush at this moment, 49% to 48% for Gore. That could still change with the vote still out there. Uh, presidential races don't get much closer than this. Uh, you'd have to go back to the Kennedy-Nixon race in 1960 to have it this close at this hour, although Nixon and Humphrey uh, in 1968 were also very close. Now, with the polls now closed everywhere but Alaska, this is how the map looks. And let's talk to the map because right now, this is the whole game. In a way, George Bush has sort of been camped inside the five-yard line for a long time. But he hasn't been able to get through to what the sportscasters call the big house. In this case, the White House. That is to say, to, to score, to get it over with. Because the big things happened in the last hour, hour and a half. California's 54 electoral votes went for Gore. That's the reason he's still in it, uh, and, and the reason Gore leads with 230 to 229. And you say, well, if Gore leads at 230 to 229, why would you say uh, that it's shaded toward Bush? Well, here's the reason. First of all, Florida's 25 electoral votes are still out there. We, Florida's been moved into the undecided column. If Bush gets that, it's probably a wrap. But, set that aside for the moment. Arkansas, six electoral votes, the polls have been closed there for quite a while. The Bush people are, have remained very confident they can carry Arkansas. Maybe they get it, maybe they don't. Six electoral votes. Iowa has seven. Uh, Wisconsin has 11. Washington State. Uh, and uh, Washington has 11. Oregon has seven. Arizona has eight. Now, let me move up to Maine. We said earlier that we'd given Maine's three electoral votes in Maine to Al Gore, and it one remained undecided because Maine's one of two states along with Nebraska uh, where the electors are, go according to congressional districts. We now feel confident in saying that Gore will get all four of Maine's uh, electoral votes. That's why we've added one more for Gore and makes it now 231 for Gore, 229 uh, for Bush. It's true to understand this Electoral College vote in Maine and Nebraska, it's about as complicated as a wiring diagram for some dynamo, but the way it goes, in Nebraska uh, and in, in Maine, what you have is a situation where they allow the electors to be apportioned according to the way congressional districts vote. And early on, there was a congressional district up in Maine where it was so close we didn't call it. Now, all four of Maine's electoral votes are put in Gore's column, and that now makes the totals Electoral College, where it takes 270 to win, 231 for Gore, 229 for Bush, with the following states out. Polls have closed, but no decision. Florida, Arkansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, Arizona, Oregon, and Washington State. The polls will be closed in Alaska with three electoral votes, the last place where any polls are open very, very shortly. Quickly, Ed Bradley, we've done the math and said, look, it's still shaded slightly favoring Bush, but anything can happen. Anything can happen, and, and looking at how close this is in, uh, in Florida, hard numbers, about 2.1 million for Bush, 1.9 million for Gore, and 75% of the vote has actually been counted. So there's 25% of the vote still to come in. It could go either way, Dan. Electoral vote, 231 now for Gore, 229 for Bush. Our CBS News election night coverage will continue in a moment. Welcome back to CBS News election headquarters in New York. Uh, what an election night. Let's pause and take a deep breath. Appreciate it for what it is. This is the dance of democracy. This is as close as we come 
uh, to a kind of uh, sacred time uh, in this country. Election day, where people go to the polls, pull the curtain behind them, no one but you and the, the electronics or however you vote, just you and the ballot. This day, votes only talk, everything else walks. And we come here just before midnight in the east with it couldn't be any closer. Gore 231, Bush 229. Now we take a look at some of these tick tight presidential races. Let's take a look at them. Uh, first in Wisconsin with 11 electoral votes in the presidential race. Trying to get it up for you here. Wisconsin, presidential. Let's send it and hope it gets up. This is the way it looks. Bush 48%, Gore 48%, Ralph Nader 4%. The Gore people will be cursing under their breath about that, whether they deserve to or not. They will be. Uh, Eleven electoral votes uh, at stake there in Wisconsin. Now, let's move on down to uh, Iowa. Seven electoral votes there. Presidential race. This is the way it looks in Iowa. If we can get it up. You know, sometimes anchormen are not too good at this complicated machinery and electronics. But there it is. Seven electoral votes. Al Gore 50%, Bush 47%, that's with 63% of, of the precincts reporting out of Iowa. Slow vote count in Iowa. It could be a while before we know how this one turns out. Now, let's go to Arkansas. Arkansas has had the polls closed for a very long time. And in the Arkansas Senate race, this is the way, uh, the Arkansas presidential race, I'm sorry, six electoral votes. Bush leads 49% to 48% with only 53% of the precincts reporting. This shows you how tight it is. It's spandex tight in all of these races. So that gives you three uh, in Wisconsin, Arkansas, and Iowa. Now, one, at, one call to your attention that out Washington State, the polls are closed. 11 electoral votes there. Gore is hoping against hope to get them, but there's a Nader factor there, also uh, a Microsoft factor. Remember the uh, uh, Clinton-Gore Justice Department, as the Microsoft people like to call it, uh, uh, instituted antitrust action against Microsoft. Tough state for Gore. He could still carry it. 11 electoral votes there. Oregon, seven electoral votes. Nader may have his strongest uh, state in Oregon. We'll soon see. Anthony Mason's on our poll watch. How's Gore doing attracting Clinton voters over the night? Uh, Anthony, as we remind people, it's 231 to 229 with Gore in the electoral vote lead, 270 needed to win. Dan, we said earlier tonight that Bush had mobilized his Republican base. So how has Gore done with the coalition which Bill Clinton used to win four years ago? Well, significant erosion. Gore does have an edge here among 18 to 29 year olds, but take a look four years ago. Bill Clinton won that same group, the youth vote, very handily. And when you look at Clinton's overall 96 base, you can see that 14 percent of those voters who voted for Clinton four years ago went for Bush this time. Now, it may seem like a small number, but it's enough to swing an election, and especially one this close. Dan? Anthony Mason. Electoral vote count. Al Gore, 231. George Bush, 229. If you're saying to yourself, well, a while ago it was 230 to 229, how'd Gore get that one extra? Uh, we've explained complicated situation in Maine. Uh, they do it by congressional districts, and there was one congressional district where it hung in the balance. But Gore gets all of Maine's four electoral votes, so now we move Gore to 231, Bush to 229. Uh, go to the map again. want to point out that all of the states in red are Bushes. The states where the lights are blinking, Nevada, Louisiana, Missouri, Tennessee, Gore's home state. What a heartbreaker that is for him. What a joy. Uh, for the very confident Bush people who said all along at Cary, Tennessee. Kentucky's another one that the Republicans lost in 1996, got this time. Same story in Ohio, also in West Virginia. That's the reason those lights are blinking. Gore is still in the hunt. In fact, leads it now, 231 to 229, with 270 needed to win because Gore has won, among others, New York, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Illinois, and California, all big electoral vote states. I'm going to remind you again, I know you can say, well, I, I've heard that before, but Florida's 25 electoral votes loom very, very large at this hour. If Al Gore knew he was going to get the Florida 25 electoral votes, which at one time tonight he thought he had, uh, he'd be feeling a lot better. As it stands now, the race, as we look ahead, shaded ever so slightly toward Bush, but it is not over. Bob Schieffer.
Well, I'll tell you, Dan, I just keep uh, adding and subtracting and trying to figure up one thing. I think we can probably, probably say that we're not going to have an electoral tie. We kind of flirted with that uh, from time to time. That would be 269 votes to 269. I'm adding and subtracting here. I can't find a way that that comes out. Bob Schieffer. It's 231, Gore, 229, Bush, with 270 to 81. When? Our CBS News election coverage on this exciting, very interesting presidential election night will continue after these messages. we're going to get a testimonial from a satisfied dollar rent-a-car customer. He's agreed to tell us how he found a low rate on the perfect car. And he'll tell you all about how Dollar's award-winning website made renting a car the easiest part of planning his vacation. Here he comes now. Let's hear what he has to say. <laughs> that about says it all. So when you're planning a vacation, find out how far Dollar's low rates can take you. together with Skytel. Buy the new T900 and get a $50 rebate. 1-800-SKYTEL-5. While paramedic Dave McLeod checked the equipment before the day's first call, someone else was on Realtor.com helping Dave's family search for their first home. Later, as he was racing to his sixth call, someone else was at the bank reviewing Dave's mortgage. And while Dave was helping deliver a healthy set of twins who couldn't wait for the hospital, someone else was delivering his cashier's check to the title company. You've got a life. We let you live it. We're Realtors. Real estate is our life. He's one of the most decorated Green Berets in history. Now this colonel stands accused of murdering his wife. What did you kill her with, Colonel? I did not kill her. But could this American hero be the target of a plot to destroy him? I loved her. I still love her. Who killed the colonel's wife? 48 hours, Thursday. The needle hasn't moved. It's Gore, 231, Bush, 229, with 270 Electoral College votes needed to win. And the Electoral College map looks like this at this hour. All the states in red belong to uh, George Bush. All the ones in blue to Gore. The ones in white are places where the polls have closed, and there's no decision yet. Alaska, the polls are due to close in about 17 minutes. Ed Bradley, let's look over this Wisconsin race. 11 possibly decisive electoral votes there. The polls have been closed uh, in that state for a very long time. What's happening? You know, I can tell you the what. I'm not sure about the why, Dan. It's a little tricky. If you look in Wisconsin, union houses there are about 32% of the vote. And while in other states, Al Gore was winning 60% and more in many of those states of the union vote, in Wisconsin, he's getting only 53% of that vote. Why there, I'm not really sure. But one other thing we're seeing is that the tax cut proposals put forward by George W. Bush are hitting a good chord, a sympathetic chord with the middle class, and they are voting for Bush based on that, it seems. Ed Bradley, with 270 electoral count, uh, votes counts needed to win, it's uh, Gore 231, Bush 229. Stay right here with us. Things could move any time. We'll be right back. combination of taking the knowledge and applying it. For example, I know who the shooter is. I know what he does, what he thinks, under stress how he'll act, what's his favorite thing to do, what's his least favorite thing to do. And I got most of my rebounds before he took the shot. Knowledge is the edge. At Invesco Funds, it's the approach we use to make money for investors. You should know what Invesco knows. Hello? 
total participation. And this means everyone, all working to make sure you get the absolute best experience possible. Mr. Thurber, you're all set. Five star. So demanding, only our best retailers make the cut. It's better. We'll prove it. Only where you see these signs. Samsung joyfully introduces the world as you make it. Where our digital technology has one job. To make life more fun. We want to thrill you. Connect you. Charm you. Satisfy you. Delight you. Everyone's invited. To the Samsung Digital Experience. Friday, the fugitive becomes a hostage. You want me? You'll have to kill me. And you'll never guess what happens next. All new Fugitive. Then, the victim of the perfect murder... Oh, here's his bones. What a rush. ...is about to get justice. Who are you? An all-new CSI. And they survived the island. Hey, neighbor. But can these castaways survive a night with Nash? Oh, I'm shot! I'm shot! An all-new Nash after The Fugitive and CSI CBS Friday. Gore leads Bush 231 to 237. Arizona dropped for President Bush. He picks up eight electoral votes there. And now Bush has 237, Gore 231 with 270 needed to win. We've said it before, say it again. This is a back and forth, knock them down, get up, come back race. Bush now leads 237 to 231. And there has to be a sigh in the Gore camp because they were hoping against hope that they just might get Arizona. It generally goes Republican. The Republicans were expected to win it with, with a race this close. Uh, they were really hoping to get Arizona this late in the night. Not going to happen. The Gore people uh, will be sighing and frowning. The Bush people will be smiling. But it's not over. But Bush now leads 237 to 231, having picked up Arizona's uh, uh, eight electoral votes. 270 needed to win. So the map now looks this way. And by the way, Arizona's another state because it's blinking. That tells you that the Democrats carried it in 1996. They didn't this time. Same is true as Nevada. Same is true of Louisiana and Missouri uh, and Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia. All states that the Democrats carried last time and that George Bush has carried this time. So Bush jumps out to the lead in the Electoral College. 237 to 231, having picked up Arizona's uh, eight electoral votes. That leaves on the map in the white. Let's go back to the map if you can, please. Florida with 25 electoral votes. Uh, nobody knows how this is going to go. Arkansas, six. Iowa, seven. Wisconsin, 11. Washington, 11. Oregon, seven. And the polls are about to close in Alaska which is as close as you can get to a Republican cinch, but we don't know yet. Alaska has three uh, electoral votes. Now, that's how it stands at the moment. Other highlights of the night, Hillary Clinton's won a Senate seat. I'll hold on for the Democrats in New York. Uh, Chuck Roberts lost a Senate seat, a drop for the Democrats in Virginia. Looks like the Republicans may retain control of the Senate. Don't know yet. Could wind up to be 50-50 in the Senate. In the House, too early to say, might be shaded a bit toward Republicans uh, holding on to control of the House as well. We're going to talk to Leslie Stahl about the governor's races, but first we're going to take this commercial break, then we'll come back and talk about the presidential race and the governor's. Back at CBS News presidential election headquarters, Bush, on the strength of carrying Arizona, has soared back into the lead. He now has 237, Gore 231, with 270 Electoral College votes needed to win. Leslie Stahl, quick check on the governor's races. Dan, we have verdicts in three more state houses. No party turnover so far tonight in governor's races. In North Dakota, a Republican-leaning state, the Republican John Hoven, has beaten the Attorney General Heidi Heidkamp. She got breast cancer in the middle of the campaign. She's lost tonight. In Utah, another Republican-leaning state, the popular Republican incumbent Governor Mike Levitt has won re-election tonight. And in the state of Washington, another popular, this time Democratic incumbent Gary Locke 
has won re-election. He's the first Asian American governor in U.S. history. Leslie Stahl, in the presidential election, Bush 237, Gore 231, with 270 electoral college votes needed to win six states too close to call. Alaska will have the polls close in just a few minutes. Alaska has three electoral votes. It's shaded toward Bush, but he's not there yet. Election night on CBS. Alaska goes for Bush, gives him 240 electoral votes. Gore has 231. It is not over. Those are among the CBS News election night headlines of the hour. It's the late, late show here on election night. The polls are now closed everywhere. Totos. Round and round it goes. Who gets the electoral vote when and from exactly where? Nobody knows. But this is what's still hanging out there. Florida, Wisconsin, Arkansas, Oregon, Washington, and Iowa. We'd call them the decisive six. At midnight in the east, this is the all-important electoral vote count at this moment. 240 for Bush, 231 for Gore. It takes 270 to win. Here is the national popular vote at this moment. 49 percent to 48 percent both have about 34 million votes. With the polls now closed in Alaska, the voting is all over. The waiting isn't. Let's take a look. Alaska's, uh, uh, the last of the states to have polls closed, Alaska's three electoral votes go Republican, go for Bush, as expected. Now, six states too close to call. We want to show you the actual tabulated votes in the six states that are still out there. These six states include Florida with 25 electoral votes. This is how it looks in Florida at the moment. Bush has a 50 to 48 percent lead. How much of that comes from the absentee ballots, we can't say, but the Bush people all along, even when Florida earlier had been called for Gore, said, we think the absentee ballots are going to overtake him. Maybe, maybe not. This is the way it looks right now. And that's with 82% of the precincts reporting. Let's move uh, now to uh, Arkansas. Six electoral votes there. Gore leads 48 to 47% uh, in Arkansas. Then we move on to Wisconsin. 11 electoral votes in Wisconsin. If we can get it up, this is how close the race looks in Wisconsin at this hour. Gore leading in Wisconsin, 48 to 47. Nader is tearing up Gore in some states that Gore almost absolutely had to have, uh, and Wisconsin is one of them. However, uh, this state is undecided. It's elect 11 electoral votes are still up for grabs. Now we move on to Iowa, seven electoral votes in Iowa. The polls have been closed for a long time. Gore leads in Iowa 49% to 48% in the struggle for the seven electoral votes in Iowa. In Oregon, a state where many thought might be Ralph Nader's strongest state, the polls closed in Oregon about an hour ago, a little more than an hour ago. Uh, Bush leads Gore 48-46 with Nader 4% of the vote. Uh, that's with 40-some-odd uh, percent of the precincts reporting. So Oregon's the seven electrical votes uh, right at the moment on the basis of actual votes in and counted is shaded toward George Bush, but too early to say that Bush is in fact going to carry Oregon. And the last of our decisive six, the state of Washington, 11 electoral votes up there in the Evergreen State. And this is how close it looks in Washington if we can get the actual vote totals up. Uh, Gore leads in Washington 49 to 47 percent with 3 percent going for, for Nader. 11 electoral votes. Now, Ed Bradley, with these six, what we call the decisive six, if we can get them up on the map so people can see the states in white on our map, mm -hmm. these are the states, Florida, Arkansas, Iowa, Wisconsin, Washington, and Oregon. Al Gore doesn't have to run the table on those states mm -hmm. if he carries Florida. If he doesn't, he does have to run the table. But you look at some of the things that are important to voters in all of those states that you mentioned, Dan, qualities like honesty, Bush wins. Qualities like strong leadership, again, Bush wins. Qualities like good judgment, Bush wins again. In all of these states that you're talking about. And you say, how close is this race? Just looking at these numbers now, in Florida, with 82% of the vote actually counted, and they've had about four and a half million votes. They're roughly about 100,000 votes apart in Florida.